Welcome to this week's snippet. It's where we get down and dirty on a specific topic. In today's topic, folate versus folic acid. I'm Dr. Ben Lynch, and this is the Dirty Genes Podcast. So let's let's back up a little bit and define about what folate is. And then we'll define folic acid, and then we'll compare the two, and then we're going to also see how your body uses folate and how your body uses folic acid. And then, well, if you've got folic acid in your body, well, can your body use natural folate? So first, folate. Folate has been around for I don't know how long, as long as plants been on this amazing planet, for as long as animals have been roaming this planet, folate has been around but I'm talking about naturally grown food and animals, pasture, ranches, farms, you know, like we used to. This is a type of of food that is providing you natural folate. And folate comes from the term folar that stands for foliage, foliage folate, put it together. So if you are eating foliage, you're getting folate. And since animals eat foliage, they are storing folate in their liver and in their body. And then you are also consuming folate, especially if you're eating organ meats. So green leafy vegetables are a fantastic source of folate. Organ meats, especially liver. At times I will have some liver. And when I do, I feel this amazing flood of energy. Um, And it's got to be from grass-fed younger animals to give you a good, healthy uh, source of folate without getting all the chemicals and so on that are found in livers. So if you are getting liver, make sure it's organic, free range, and from younger animals, um, preferably even wild. So folate is natural, comes from nature, comes from the root folar, it comes from foliage, and you can consume that and your body immediately recognizes it and utilizes it, okay? Immediately. There's, there's genes that produce enzymes in your body that when you are consuming natural forms of folate, it will immediately glob onto that folate you consumed and it will put it to work. No questions. Now, what happened? When the Industrial Revolution came about, we decided that, you know what? It sucks having to make bread every single day and then throw it all out if it doesn't last on the shelves for very long. So bread manufacturers decided to come up with a way to have bread stay longer on the shelf. And what do they do? Well, you have to strip bran and nutrients out of the flour. Basically, you destroy the life of the flour, completely bleach it and destroy it. And when you're doing that, you're removing the primary nutrients, vitamins, B vitamins, and folates from the flour. And so Industrial Revolution came about, made this bread that can sit on the shelves for weeks, months, and lo and behold, people loved it. Businesses flourished, and people bought it. It It's like, oh, this is yummy. This is great. And then what happened? Oh, my gosh. Well, the health of the planet started going down. Imagine that. We decided that processing our flours, our grains, for longevity is going to be great and convenient to the detriment of our own health. So we started seeing increases in in fertility. We started seeing increases in pregnancy complications. We started seeing birth defects. And they traced it back to, oh, people aren't getting sufficient folate because we removed the natural folates from our food. And so that's awesome. They figured that out and they found the source of the problem and they didn't say, oh, God, you know what? We shouldn't really process the flour like this. We should, you know, just, you know, make refrigeration or buy it more frequently or make things in less batches, you know, less large batches. No, 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 no. They looked at how folate was, you know, built naturally you know, with the compounds of carbons and hydrogens and so on. 
and they mimicked it in a lab. They built folate, or so they thought, but it's a little bit different. And that little bit different folate that they design in the lab has a major, major difference in how it functions in your, in your human body, in your body. So what happened? They synthesized this folic acid. They threw folic acid into lab rats, and they tested the rats to see if their folate levels went up. So they gave synthetic folic acid, which has no biological benefit at all in a human body until it's changed by genes. And there is a particular gene called DHFR, which you're probably not familiar with. And we, regardless if there's a genetic variant or not in the DHFR gene, you shouldn't be taking folic acid. According to the research that they did back in the 90s, they found out that rats could process synthetic folic acid that doesn't do anything in the human body. And rats could process that folic acid with genes, with their DHFR, and immediately convert it into natural folate. So natural folate was made from synthetic folic acid. Okay. So through this particular gene called DHFR, rats had no problem. We're not rats. We are not rats. In humans, we consume synthetic folic acid. Our DHFR gene looks at that synthetic folic acid and says, I don't recognize you very well. I will try to do whatever I need to do with this thing. And it can make a little bit of real folate because remember, folic acid is synthetic, doesn't do anything until it's transformed into folate. And DHFR gene is the first step for your body to do that. So synthetic folic acid gets to this DHFR gene. It gets transformed into dihydrofolate, but only a tiny bit. Your DHFR enzyme, so genes produce enzymes, remember that episode? So genes produce ep enzymes, and so it, the DHFR enzyme can produce 200 micrograms of dihydrofolate from synthetic folic acid. Any more than 200 micrograms of folic acid that you consume, that enzyme is saying, stop, I don't want any more, I can't do anything, and that synthetic folic acid builds up in your body. And that synthetic folic acid builds up in your body is causing problems. It's causing significant amount of problems. And not only that, but some of us have a even slower dihydrofolate reductase enzyme that can't process folic acid very well at all. And it's actually quite common. I believe about 40% of people have a dihydrofolate reductase genetic variation that does not allow them to process folic acid very well at all. So what, is, what does all that mean? What, why do I even care? Here's the reason. If you are taking something and it is absolutely of no use to your body, it gets in the way. If I've got you know, my hand in front of the camera, or I've got something covering the microphone and I'm trying to speak, you're not going to hear it. It's, it's in the way. If I remove my hand, you can hear me well. If I put my hand back, it sounds muffled and it's not very good. Your biochemistry gets muffled from folic acid. There are various genes in your human body that help you absorb folate, help you carry folate, help you bind folate to the receptors on the cell membrane, and then help you utilize that folate to do various things like reduce your homocysteine or grow your healthy hair, skin, nails, and repair your gut lining and produce neurotransmitters and so on. But that harmful synthetic folic acid reduces your body's ability to do all of that. So all this focus on enriching and fortifying our foods with synthetic folic acid is doing us major harm. The difference between synthetic folic acid and natural folates is synthetic folic acid is completely man-made and has no zero physiological utilization or use in our body at all. While natural folates found in leafy green vegetables or from animal products, especially organ meats, are readily 
is available for our enzymes and our body to absorb, recognize, and use. Whereas folic acid gets in the way and blocks our natural folate's ability to actually perform those functions. I choose natural folates. I refuse synthetic folic acid. I would like you to do the same. So if you are wondering how significant it is, I invite you to try reading labels. I invite you to try tossing that synthetic folic acid supplement in the trash. And I invite you to try real nutrients with real folate in them. And you can go to seekingout.com and you can find any of our multivitamins that have true folates in there. And you can choose from methylfolate, you can choose from folinic acid, um, and you can choose from actually having a multivitamin with no folate at all, because some people get sufficient folates from their leafy greens or their diet. And when I surveyed, I had a, a huge email list. And when I surveyed, I asked them the question, I said, what is the number one thing that I've taught you over the years that you've implemented in your life that's given you the best result? Big question, right? I've been doing this for God, over a decade now. The most common answer out of 4,000 responses was removing folic acid from my life led to the most significant improvements. The removal of folic acid has led to the most significant improvements in my life. So that is different than the addition of folate to my life. It's the removal of folic acid. So until next time, look at labels, make your decisions, start spreading the word, please, that natural folates are better and synthetic folic acid has got to go. So folic acid sucks. The Dirty Genes podcast doesn't suck, or at least I hope so. And I'd love to hear your feedback about the Dirty Genes podcast. So if you could leave a review on iTunes or Google or wherever you found us, that would be most appreciated. Click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. And hey, I, I love doing these things. I've got more that, that are coming. And uh, I, I learn from you. So when you share your comments uh, with us and you comment on our videos on YouTube as well with questions, I do enjoy those. So please keep those coming. And until next time, here on the Dirty Jeans Podcast, I hope this helps you.